The Shadowlands is the dark, mysterious location of this world. It doesn't get more chilling than this place. The region's only main port city produced Melisandre and Quaithe, if they're being honest about their origins. The most taboo forms of magic that we see Melisandre use are openly practiced in the only city, Ashai, where everyone walks around alone, faces covered with masks. In the large, quiet city, there are no children. It's almost always dark here, thanks to the surrounding mountain range casting its massive shadows. But the residents don't even bother lighting their streets and homes. Shadows are the theme here. The group of people from here are called the Shadowmen. But we don't know if this is the title for the city dwellers in Ashai, or the brave few who ventured out. The horrors from the Shadowlands that this whole discussion is about come from outside these city walls. The tattooed covered Shadowmen aren't all so considerate as Quaithe was with Danny in the books. Some are known to go out and reeve and pillage the bordering lands. And if they practice the notorious shadowbinding magic, they're probably very difficult to deal with. Shadowbinders like Melisandre can create those deadly shadow babies and manipulate light in a way to change appearances. But still, shadowmen are the least of your worries. The only source of fresh water is polluted to the point where no animal can survive this region. Yeah, there's zero animals in the Shadowlands, which complicates the video about the creatures found here. It comes from a river called the Ash. Somehow the black polluted water has become so toxic that animals that don't even drink or touch it are affected by it because they're more sensitive to it compared to humans. There are fish that have managed to adapt to the waters, meaning they're seemingly immune but at the cost of looking deformed and being blind. While the ash is always black during the day, it glows with some strange lights during the night. Bioluminescent fish are a real thing that can explain the ash glowing in the dark. Because of the ash, all water and food have to be imported into a shy. The pollution goes as far as polluting any fruit or vegetation attempting to grow. But there's even rumors of the gold and gems found outside the city being tainted. Still, traders come looking for all the plentiful jewels to exchange for their everyday luxuries. It's mentioned in a lore book that only fools and shadowbinders eat the hideous twisted fish. The magic shadowbinders definitely figured something out they're just not willing to share. In between the mountains throughout the Shadowlands, deep below within the valleys, grows only one prominent plant. It's called ghost grass. I'm lumping this one in with the creatures because of a prominent Dothraki belief. This ominous plant that can grow taller than a person on horseback is a strange pale white translucent color and very invasive. It'll keep spreading until no other type of grass is left, so it's good that it's mostly contained within these dark valleys. Doesn't seem like they need much sunlight if they can manage to grow here shaded by all the tall mountains. The Dothraki superstition goes that the ghost grass glows with the spirits of the damned. They believe one day ghost grass will cover the planet in its entirety, which isn't out of the realm of possibility. In the second book, during Danny's stay in Karth, ghost grass is beginning to grow in a particular garden. Nothing alarming yet, but something is happening. Magic is increasing in power after the birth of her dragons. As for the spirits living within the blades of grass, the Dothraki are not the most advanced civilization. Can't really trust their barbaric view on things. But we can look to the characters that have been brought back from the dead, filling us in on what an afterlife in this universe looks like. Looking at our resident expert on death, Beric Dondarrion has been suspiciously quiet on the topic. I can understand why Lady Stoneheart doesn't spill the beans, because her throat is wide open. But if we were to take Beric's dialogue from Game of Thrones seriously, he only found darkness after death, nothing else. If animals and plants can survive the Shadowlands, what's out there that makes even the Shadowmen afraid to travel? Things only found in nightmares, of course. Only Shadowbinders have the courage to travel upstream past the city walls. At least, three creatures are believed to live in the mountains and valleys. Dragons, demons, and something that people spreading these tales refer to as worse than even dragons and demons. Based on ancient scripts, the Asha'i try to claim the birthplace of all dragons. These Asha'i histories say that a people so ancient they had no name first tamed dragons in the shadow and brought them to Valyria, teaching the Valyrians their arts before departing from the annals. Dragons almost certainly layered in the Shadowlands mountain cliffs because there weren't many places they couldn't fly to and bones can be found throughout the world. But the whole ancient people taming them before the Valyrians is a hard one to sell, when the Valyrian race to this day carries the ability through their DNA, while no one here in the Shadowlands does. Illyrio claims the dragon eggs he gifted Daenerys came from here. From the Shadowlands beyond a shy, the ages have turned them to stone but they will always be beautiful. 
and in one of the wilder early chapters of the series, Bran sees dragons during his magical dream in the Shadowlands, when the Three-Eyed Raven tries to awaken his powers while still in a coma. He quote, saw clear across the narrow sea to the free cities of the Green Dothraki Sea and beyond, to Vos Dothrak under its mountain, to the fable lands of the Jade Sea, to a shy by the shadow, where dragons steered beneath the sunrise. What time period his vision takes place, whether it be the past, present, or future, is up for debate. But dragons are, or were, here. They must have had a difficult time feeding though. Humans were probably the only thing on the menu nearby. Neighboring lands like the jungles within Yeti or the unknown continent below the Shadowlands would provide better options if the flight there was worth it. If Danny's dragon stone eggs did originate from eons ago in the Shadowlands, like she's told, they seem to be exactly the same type of beast as Valyria's dragons. Two wings, two legs, and the ability to breathe fire. There still isn't any other known variant, just rumors of ice dragons and an ancient sea dragon. As for demons, they're mentioned quite a bit in the story and lore, but nothing definitive about what exactly they are in this world. It appears to be just a general term for an evil being. You can let your imagination fly with this one. But author George Martin likes to stick with known mythological or fantastical creatures for his story. I can't think of a creature he's created entirely on his own, but name one of your fictional favorites and it's probably mentioned somewhere in all the books, like griffins or krakens. Tales of demons pop up especially in places men haven't or can't travel to. And even the Shadowbinders, who travel upstream along the ash, fear traveling to a certain place in the Shadowlands. A place in ruin called Stagai, or the Corp City, located at the Shadow's heart. It's here the most terrible things must live. Shadowbinders don't even fear the mutant toxic fish. The last creature mentioned, something worse than a dragon or demon, is one of the mysterious types of descriptions Martin likes to employ the further away you travel from the Seven Kingdoms. It's a great tool to illustrate how primitive this world still is and how massive its scale, if people haven't figured it all out yet. What could be worse than a dragon or demon? Well, nothing tops dragons in this world as of yet, so it would have to be a new creature to the story. An easy way to introduce vampires, with the place not having sunlight and to match the corpse city theme. Or something a bit more fun that caused the ash to get polluted in the first place. It's not like there's nuclear reactors around to do it. Hydras are written in original iterations to have poison breath and other toxic properties. So it could be something to fit the theme here. A destroyed city, something subjectively worse than dragons and polluted waters. Wait, do rivers need a cause to be toxic? Can they just be polluted from natural causes? Where are all the hydrologists? Help me out here. The Hydra is the iconic mythological serpent with a bunch of heads. Believe it's supposed to have nine heads, but you know how things go with these myths. Just depends on how generous a rider is feeling. Would be cool if a massive Hydra laid within the ash, but would come out of the water if need be. I'm sure some who have dug deep into mythological creatures will have their own theories here, but will never get answers. The Shadowlands have to remain a mystery.